Hi, welcome to Deep Sea Foundation YouTube video. I am Terry Couty, founder and director, and I'm very fortunate to be in Columbus, Ohio this week, interviewing Dr. Tawari and Dr. Kochak at Midwest Breast in Columbus. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, Terry. Hi. So, I have a lot of women talk about how much of that muscle is taken when they're having mm -hmm. breast reconstruction, and then they start talking about, did I really have a deep? Did I have a tram? So can you different, differentiate for our viewers when there's a little bit of confusion about that? Yeah, I think that's a really good topic. It's, and what they need to know about it. Yeah, it's yeah. confusing for patients because a lot of patients don't really know, to be honest, what was done to them. They know they had a breast reconstruction. A lot of times they'll know it was taken from the abdomen, from the tummy area. But they don't know if it was a pedicle tram or a free tram or a deep flap. So the reason it's confusing is because on the outside, it all it, looks it's the, the same. same. It's a scar. On the, the inside, abdomen. it's entirely different. Yeah, it's a tummy tuck scar, but it looks the same. So a pedicle tram is when you have to take one of the six-pack muscles. So you've got a three-pack and a three-pack. So you have to take one of those six-pack muscles, and you take the tissue from the tummy based on that muscle, and you rotate it up to the chest. And for a long time, you know, I'd say the 80s and 90s, you know, even a little bit now, um, patients or surgeons would do pedicle trams. The problem with it, in a setting where you're doing a two-sided reconstruction, when you take both muscles, it can be very limiting to patients. Um, it's trouble. It's hard for patients to get out of a chair, get out of bed, because you've lost a lot of that core stability. So that's a pedicle trail. Now, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. You're using the word pedicle. Mm -hmm. Is that a tunneling? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. So that's, that's the one I you kind of want to make the distinction. Yes. You tunnel it up and through. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not a free flap. It's not a microsurgical free flap like the deep flap or a free tram or a free muscle sparing tram, which is, I think, the next thing you were kind of leading yeah. to there. Yeah. So, Thank you for answering that. So the pedicle tram, that's a super important distinction. For a long time, it was the way things were done, <clears throat> but it had some problems. So because you're tunneling it up into the chest, you have to go through what's called the inframammary fold. And the inframary fold is kind of where your bra sits, and it's a real anatomic structure. And once it's disrupted, it leads to the tissue almost sliding down the chest. Mm -hmm. On top of that, pedicle trams, because they're actually the less robust, the less uh, dominant blood supply to that tissue, they have a lot more problems with healing, things like fat necrosis. Mm -hmm. So for many reasons, the pedicle tram um, was replaced by the free tram. So the, Which, well, the free yeah. tram is, is based, it still takes the whole six pack muscle, still takes the whole muscle, but the difference now is instead of rotating it up, it's detached completely mm -hmm. and it's transplanted, not based on the vessels coming from the top, but based on the vessels coming from the bottom. Right. So not from the superior vessels there, it's based on the inferior vessels. Ironically, those inferior vessels are way superior. They're yeah. the actual dominant blood supply to that piece of skin and fat. Okay. So when we switch that, when that happened, that switch led to much better um, fat uh, sort of survival in the tissue. Yeah. When we were doing yeah, the, the, the yeah, when we were doing the pedicle rotation ones, we had fat necrosis was a major issue. You'd right. lose uh, edges of the flap. So now that with that sort of change, we started to base the piece of tissue on the dominant blood supply, but it and, required microsurgery. And because it was a free flap, it's free, you have three-dimensional rotational yeah. freedom to create a better looking breast. No more tunneling. No more tunneling. Mm -hmm. So it was a real big advance, but it's you're still, still taking one of the muscles and do you worry about mesh and those types of problems with a free muscle tram? I mean, pretty much in every one of those cases, mesh is required to close because not only is muscle going but a part of fascia goes and then suddenly you're left with a shortage in terms of closing the yeah. inside body wall so to get that body wall to close and to stay closed most of those cases were closed with mesh probably mm -hmm. almost all of them um, so that's why as we understood more and and better how that skin in fact got its blood supply we started we learned that it wasn't the muscle it was actually blood vessels perforating through the muscle 
perforating through, going into the skin and fat, that led to the ability for us to now do perforator flaps, which is which is what a deep inferior epigastric artery perforator flap is. It actually is based on the, the blood vessels that go through the muscle. And the whole point is it lets us actually, gives us the ability to, in most cases, entirely spare the muscle tissue and tease out the vessels. That's the word I was looking for, that teasing out. Because mm -hmm. you're not taking the muscle, mm -hmm. you're going into it, Mm -hmm. Microsurgically, that's mm -hmm. when you guys go in and look for those perforators, mm -hmm. and you're you're preserving that muscle and nerves, the muscle yeah, and, and the, the nerves. nerves. Very talk, important. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I mean, the nerves that actually go into the six pack muscle are probably just as important as the muscle, maybe more. Yeah. And so if if we're going in there and removing muscle, or even taking, there's a thing called a muscle sparing tram, which is sort of a, a, between a, a full tram and a deep flap that takes a chunk of muscle, maybe not the whole muscle, but a chunk of muscle, that often ends up damaging a lot of the nerves during the dissection. Mm -hmm. And so whatever muscle is left is now kind of paralyzed because the nerves that were going into it have been damaged as part of the dissection or part of the flap elevation. And so, so it how, can be disruptive. How, how this is, is that remedied? I mean, well, I think I'm, it's very confusing for patients to know what they had. So what we like to do in our practice yeah. is we uh, will give the patient a picture of the fascial defect, we'll take a picture of the actual flap before we transfer yeah, it. It's the back of the flap. The back I mean, of we the can flap. actually take a look at the back of that flap and what you're gonna see is a nice sheet of yellow, which is the fat, and somewhere in there you'll see a little vascular pedicle, the artery and the vein. Mm -hmm. Now, if a large piece of muscle was included in that flap, it will be very visible okay. um, as a sort of large sort of red piece of tissue okay. and it's very very visible it's dark red and so uh, one can immediately assess how much muscle at least was taken with the piece of tissue and so i mean a true diep flap would really have almost no muscle tissue on it because it's based only on the perforating vessels but i think it's important for patients to know what was done to them so that if you have some abdominal pain if you have some abdominal weakness you can correlate it in your mind with the picture that your plastic surgeon gave you and it's one reason that we do that for our patients because I think it helps the communication. It helps people understand what happened during the surgery. And it's a simple photograph. Yeah. It's a it's a you know it's a one simple photograph of the back of the flap before it's actually taken and revascularized. So. Yeah. Doing that intraoperative. Mm -hmm. it has to be intraoperative. Exactly. So yeah, that's what I was going to say. It would give you a good point of discussion mm -hmm. uh, if there are any issues afterwards and and you've got a visual there to talk to your yeah your and it about. helps us too we can always look and see oh you know there was maybe a little bit of muscle or maybe yeah. the fascial defect or the cut in the fascia was a little bit more complicated than we would have expected but these are all things when we really carefully plan and choose the vessels um, carefully based on some in our practice CT angiogram CT scan it shows us the dominant vessels mm -hmm. it shows us where they are it really helps us optimize the vessels we include and yeah. so if we select those vessels carefully and include the best ones then we can also minimize the damage to the muscle that that would happen during the dissection mm -hmm. we can then really get robust perforator flaps deep flaps yeah. right and and better function too afterwards in the of abdominal course. area yeah. For the patient. It's very which, important to keep that in mind. Right, right. Okay, good discussion, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Please like the video after you have watched uh, and subscribe, and let us know if there are any other topics that we can cover for you uh, in regards to topics dealing with breast reconstruction. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank All you. Right.